Hey folks and welcome to another video of mine. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Crisis Remastered. This is another remaster that I'm actually covering in today's video. Last week, I actually covered the Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered. Now, I'm um, very excited about this uh, particular game because uh, this game, just like the one that we uh, saw last week, is very old. It's a very, very old title. In fact, it originally came out in 2007, that makes it almost 14 years old. And <laughs> that is phenomenal. Um, so a few quick things that uh, I quickly want to touch upon before we get started, uh, apart from the age of this game that is. Now, this game has uh, various modes available on the Xbox Series S. It has three different modes. One is a performance mode, one is your quality mode, and one is your ray tracing mode. Now, surprisingly, and um, Xbox lovers will definitely enjoy and appreciate this. On the PlayStation 5, the Crisis 5 Remastered, when it comes to the quality mode, actually plays out at 1800p. <laughs> that's right, 1800p. But that's at 60 FPS. But on the Xbox Series S, it plays out at 2160p, which is 4K, but at 30 FPS when it comes to the quality mode. So just thought, you know, I'll uh, quickly mention that. Uh, the load time, I will put up a timer so that you can take a look at, you know, how long it takes to load so that you get an average um, understanding of how the load times are. Now, this game is stored on my external hard drive. It's not stored on the internal storage. So we'll also get an idea as to how that impacts the game. All right. Now, apart from that, um, I also want to mention that, um, you know, in terms of size, how much size it takes up, I'm going to put that information up on screen. And uh, apart from that, there is no FPS boost option available for this game. There is no auto HDR available for this game because obviously it's already got the quality performance and the ray tracing mode available. So now that the game has completely loaded, let's um, quickly take a look at, you know, the graphics and, uh, yeah, this I believe is the first mode that we are checking out and this is the ray tracing mode. And the reason why we chose to go along with this particular mode to begin with is because it's easy to toggle between your quality and performance mode. But if you want to get back to ray tracing mode, you have to restart the checkpoint again. So that's why I thought, you know, let's first quickly take a look at the ray tracing mode. And here, as you can see, you know, there are very pretty reflections on the water. Uh, the reflection of the stone, the reflection of the boat, and um, yeah, everything looks neat. It looks very nice. Hello, turtle. Hi there, and bye there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, I'm not cruel to animals. Just want to put out a disclaimer. Animal cruelty, say no to it. But uh, this is just a game, so I'm just having fun. Now, let's quickly, you know, take a look at the other options available. So as you can see on screen, now, when it comes to the graphics, I was on the ray tracing mode, but the moment I want to switch over to some other mode, let's say performance, I have to restart the level. So this is what I meant, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, switching between ray tracing and performance and quality. Now it's easy to toggle between quality and performance, but for ray tracing, you have to restart the level. So if you're on quality, if you want to come to ray tracing, restart level. If you're on performance, you want to come back to ray tracing, you have to restart level and vice versa. Uh, but when it comes to quality to performance and performance to quality, there is no need to restart the level. We're going to take a look at that as well in a quick bit. So here again, you know, load times. Um, well, we have to take into consideration that this at the end of the day is stored on my external hard drive. So I'm going to give it the benefit of doubt. And um, I'm going to say that, yes, load times are slightly higher than, you know, some of the other games that I've played. But it could be because of the external hard drive. I don't know, you know, if you have stored it on your internal storage, do let me know, you know, if that actually impacts the overall load times. Um, you can reach out to me via the comment section and let me know. It's always great to talk to you people uh, via the comment section. So now I'm here in this other mode. I think this is the performance mode. And as you can see, even after, you know, skipping over to the performance mode, the graphics looks very neat. I mean, the resolution, everything looks sharp. The movement, wow, the frame rate per second is phenomenal. And here, I'm just going to close in on this plant or this tree. It looks like a, a nice banana type of a plant. <laughs> All right. But um, yeah, coming to the um, reflections on the water, well, it's there, but it's not exactly ray tracing. Uh, but the graphics are sharp. 
But what is impressive is the frame rate. It is phenomenal. It is smooth, silky smooth. If you have seen the movie The Zohan, you would understand. You know when I say silky smooth. <laughs> so here we are at the beach again. Oh, there's the turtle again. Hi, turtle, and bye, turtle again. No to animal cruelty. <laughs> um, the reflection on the water. Well, it's not exactly like the one we saw on the ray tracing. Everything looks sharp, even in the performance mode. I'm quite surprised that you know it looks this good even in the performance mode while it maintains that FPS. It's a solid 60 FPS that I'm getting right now. So let's quickly toggle between you know the other options in the game. Uh, now I'm gonna head over to the quality mode. And you see, when you move over from performance to quality, you can easily make that switch. You do not have to restart the level. But if you're moving from any of the other modes to ray tracing and vice versa, you have to restart the level. So here, quality mode is on again. HDR is on, uh, excellent. And as you can see, yes, I can clearly make out a difference. Uh, everything looks slightly sharper. I'm gonna head over to the same location. Uh, again, just to give you an idea, you know, as to how it looks um, from that particular angle. And um, let's take a look at the trees very quickly above. Wow, very sharp, excellent. It looks fantastic. Even that uh, mountain in the background is um, there's this incredible detail, the uh, foliage, the um, trees, the um, grass, the rock, man, it's phenomenal. It's, it's amazing. The quality mode, everything is sharp. And this is 2160p. So this is 4k, but 30 FPS, not 60 FPS, but hey, if you've got a television which does have MEMC, then you can have that artificial or boosted, you know, uh, 60 FPS through MEMC. So that's why I always, you know, talk about having good television with good motion handling. So my TV, the Samsung AU9070 does a fantastic job when it comes to motion. And here we are at the beach, the turtle, since we never restarted the level, ah, oh, it's dead. <laughs> but um, as you can see, the water, the rocks, the grass looks neat, very crisp, very sharp, very detailed. Everything looks fantastic in 4K. Of course, the frame rate does get impacted because this is now running at 30 FPS and not on 60 FPS. So the frame rate takes a, you could say a backseat when it comes to the quality mode, but um, hey, you give some, you get some. So I think, you know, the different modes, they have their own unique benefits and advantages. So I'm just going to toggle between the quality mode back over to the performance mode. And I'm just going to take a quick run here. I'm going to sprint so that you understand, you know, how it actually affects the, uh, the frame rate and how smooth it is when you actually switch over to the performance mode, just confirming again, heading over to the performance mode. And here you have it. This is the performance mode clicking on that. And we are ready. Let's sprint. And let's find out how this positively impacts. Oh, I mean, the moment you pan that camera, right? I mean, you can figure it out. <laughs> I mean, it's enough. The moment you pan, it's enough. You know that, yes, this is 60 FPS. Let's again switch over to the quality mode. I'm going to toggle between these two different modes and uh, show you, you know, the big difference. See, look, look at the panning of the camera. It's not as smooth as the performance mode. Hey, the graphics, the resolution is sharper. Of course, you know, everything looks better on screen, but in terms of the gameplay, it's not as smooth as that performance mode. And for people who appreciate a higher frame rate, they're going to appreciate the fact that you do have a performance mode with 60 FPS. And now I've again switched over to the performance mode and wow, I'm sprinting. It is smooth. It is ex excellent. Excellent. In fact, so smooth. And, um, you know, especially for games like crisis in the first person mode, you know, with the crosshair, I think people will appreciate the 60 FPS. And again, it's incredible that you're getting this on the Xbox series S, a $300 console. In fact, I always talk about it in all my videos because I'm so impressed with this little beast of a machine that it is, it dishes out excellent performance. And the price to value ratio that you get through your Xbox series S is just phenomenal. And the, the fact that you don't just get 1080p at 60 FPS, but in fact, you get 4k gaming on crisis, this particular game. And this game is beautiful. The, the Island, 
that you're on the um, the level looks the level detailing the level design is absolutely gorgeous i mean it's breathtaking some of some of the places you know where you would stand you could just literally gaze um at the distance and um yeah i mean it's it's just so good just incredible now uh, it did take me a couple of tries here um to get out of this level okay so i'm gonna start here because i actually kind of died in that uh last uh battle or fight so i'm gonna continue here and um yeah this again i'm panning the camera and everything looks beautiful it's i was just talking about you know how gorgeous the island is and how beautiful you know the game looks and um you can make out you know the variations the level design is excellent by the way uh everything from the ground to the trees to the grass to the um these these tents you know made out of uh these aluminium you could say I don't know what what exactly is it called, but um, uh, hey, the details it's it's there. I mean, everything looks brilliant. And again, the game is snappy so far. I have not had any uh, frame drops. I have not had any screen tearing, not even once. No ghosting so far. The TV is also doing a great job. The Samsung AU nine zero seven zero is doing a fantastic job here, and uh, it. helps enhance the beauty of the game you could say because you know the colors when they pop um you definitely appreciate and enjoy it a lot more so that is definitely something that you will get with the Samsung AU9070 so here i've reached this checkpoint hopefully i don't do a bad job here and um i didn't you know i learned that you have to put your armor on from the previous experience that i had in the last you know fight scene that uh I uh, did such a bad job at. So here I've learned my lesson, you could say, and uh, I did quite well, don't you? So um, yeah, you can toggle between different weapons. You've got uh, pistols, you've got uh, like a machine gun, uh, you've even got a shotgun. But I did not exactly pick up the shotgun. And um, the action scenes, you know, I mean, here people who appreciate frame rates would definitely appreciate the quicker frame rates here so uh, in the performance mode this particular section especially the uh, fight scenes you know the shooting etc will shine for the more now the game you know i mean in some areas the enemy ai is so smart and in some areas it's so dumb you could say here i mean it was just sitting right there to be shot at and uh, on the other hand look at look at this this enemy here I mean it's it's clearly dodging my bullets and it's way smarter so the the enemy ai in this game i found uh, very funny quite weird actually some are extremely smart and some are extremely dumb <laughs> um weird um i like dumb enemies because you know i just like you know enjoying the storyline and the story mode so um and i'm playing this game as always on the easy mode and uh, as you can see i mean the fight sequences everything is sharp we also going to get a cut scene very quickly so i'll uh quickly comment on that as well and here you can look at the lighting as well um the lighting that's coming out of the gun uh focused lighting i'm sure ray tracing would have had a positive impact here but again i'm not moving over to ray tracing because hey, like i told you i'll have to restart the whole level again so i'm just going to continue from this point on and i'm going to toggle between the two uh modes performance and quality mode but as you can see the uh, the graphics are impressive and again to have a game which is from 2007 it's 14 years old guys i mean it's <laughs> phenomenal it's 14 years old so the gameplay dynamics have not changed because it's still the same what has actually changed is the textures have been improved upon and um, you know since it's a remastered some of those textures actually benefit from the uh, upscaled 4k graphics So that is what has changed but the core of the game in terms of the gameplay the mechanics etc all are more or less the same so it doesn't seem like that even in 2021 it seems like a game which actually got developed in 2021 it is that good so the moment you pick this game up and start playing it if you have never played crisis and by the way guys i have never played crisis i don't know if i should be embarrassed to say this but uh, if you've seen my videos then you know that i don't particularly enjoy first person shooters and since this is a first person shooter i never got an opportunity or never got around to playing crisis 
when it actually came out in 2007. Now, I generally enjoy third person games, but um, I think I'm doing quite okay, you know, for my first first person game that I've actually played for so long. I've never played a game for so long when it comes to first person games. Um, but this one, I seem to be enjoying it uh, simply because of the fact that, again, hey, everything looks great and it's so smooth. The experience is fabulous. And I think that also matters, you know, when you are gaming. So I'm a, I'm, you know, one example of that. I don't enjoy first person games, but in this case, I'm making an exception simply because of the fact that the experience that I'm getting out of the Xbox Series S is phenomenal. I mean, it is that good. And that's why I'm enjoying the first person gaming as well. And again, here we cut to a cutscene, and uh, the, uh, the cutscene looks great. I mean, the detailing is there and the transition from the gameplay to the cutscene was seamless. Um, the only thing that I noticed that changed was, you know, you've got like this cinema scope going. So there's a black bar at the top and at the bottom. So when it moves into the cutscene, you have a, a cinema scope a view. And when it finally goes over to the gameplay, it's again back to full screen. So it kind of helps you differentiate between the cutscenes and also the gameplay. But the entry into the cutscene was seamless. So I didn't feel like there was a change in the uh, details, that there was a change in the quality of graphics. Because a lot of the older games, uh, they had this distinction, you know, when it moved over from gameplay to cutscene, the cutscene would look much better. And then the gameplay would not be that good. And in some cases, you know, if the cutscenes were pre-rendered, um, then the cutscenes would not look good, too good, but the game would look good because, you know, the game, you know, it, it's it's dynamic. Um, fantastic. You know, I mean, that, that sequence was good. And we finally get a first glimpse of uh, what the enemy looks like. Yeah, the real enemy, not the North Koreans in this case, but the real enemy actually looks like. So here we are supposed to be chasing uh, our comrade. And I'm just going to quickly move over to the performance mode again. We're in the quality mode right now. I'm going to move over to the performance mode because now we are sprinting, right? So I just want to give you a feel of how it feels, you know, when I'm sprinting through the jungle. I'm running now and oh man, this is smooth. Again, every time I switch over to the performance mode, I'm absolutely blown away by the smoothness that is on offer with the Xbox Series S. It's incredible. Again, $300 console and it's doing such a great job. I mean, Xbox, they've done such a fantastic job and kudos to the team. And uh, even the de developers, you know, I mean, who have worked on these games, like especially these remastered games, definitely appreciate, you know, you making a remaster so that uh, people who have not enjoyed these games way back then, you know, can now enjoy it in high fidelity graphics. So that is definitely appreciated. And um, I think we're going to move into another cutscene here and uh, a quick load screen. Uh, I'm not putting a timer in every, you know, load screen uh, simply because of the fact that, you know, once you have an understanding of how much longer it takes uh, for um, a game to load, I think you get the gist of, you know, what the load times are going to look like. And in case you have installed this game on your internal storage, and um, if you're getting better load times, then do let me know in the comment section as well. I haven't moved this game over to my internal storage and tried it out. I have always played it through my external hard drive. And it's a hard drive. It's not an SSD, all right? So it's it's one of those old, you know, mechanical hard drives. So um, the load times are, you could say, it, it definitely, you know, takes away from that experience because once you are used to the snappy load times on the Xbox Series S, um, it, you know, I mean, how, how, how would you put it? You know, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's that kind of an experience. So once you are used to those snappy load times, going back to, you know, load times, which are higher than like 10 to 15 seconds, it takes a toll on you, um, on your mind. And it definitely makes you a little impatient when you have long load screens um, on display. So yeah, this scene reminds you of Avengers Endgame. Snap the finger, turn to dust. <laughs> uh, but the cutscene again is fabulous. And in the performance mode, the last cutscene was in the quality mode. This cutscene was in the performance mode and everything is so smooth. Every time, you know, I mean, I get to experience the performance mode again. I have always been a fan of quality mode. I've always preferred and favored resolution over your frame rate. But hey, I mean, how can you say, you know, no to a frame rate like this? I mean, it's just so good. It's just so smooth. And um, I think you'd be able to make this out in the video as well as to how smooth and how good this actually looks. So this is a fabulous example of how 
stupendously good <laughs> the Xbox Series S actually performs. And um, again, it's simply mind blowing. It's outstanding. Um, and even with the performance mode, it's not like, you know, the graphic is taking the graphics. It's, it's taking like a huge hit. I don't think it's taking a huge hit at all because it's at 1080p. Yes. So it's 1080p 60 FPS, but even at 1080p 60 FPS, everything looks sharp. Everything looks neat. And again, like I said, if you've got a good 4k television, the 4k television itself will upscale your 1080p to 4k. So that also makes a difference. So if you're playing it on a 4k TV, you will be able to benefit from that 4k upscaling on your local TV. So, um, yeah, Crisis Remastered, guys. I mean, uh, let me know what you think about uh, the Crisis Remastered, um, what you felt about the game. We're going to stop here, so I'm just going to pause the screen here. I'm going to talk on top of it. And um, I do make videos like this, and uh, I release them every single week where I'm reviewing games or, you know, uh, giving this gameplay kind of an experience with commentary um, on top of it. And um, if you enjoy this kind of a content, then you can hit that subscribe button. And also, please do hit that like button. It does help with the YouTube algorithm and it encourages me, it motivates me to put out more content like this for you lovely folks. If you haven't already hit that bell icon, please go ahead and hit that bell icon as well. Because in case uh, I release another video of mine, you get a notification that I have released another video of mine. So please do hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon. It definitely matters a lot to me. Now, with that said, we come to the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed this gameplay experience. And uh, that's a wrap for this one. Until we meet again in the next video, folks, this is me signing off. And I'd say take care, stay safe, and may God bless you all.